Welcome back to A Bit Gaming and uh, another history video, this time on the Persian Sparabara. What sparked this was I was watching a video of someone who was talking about improving their stats, you know, because they didn't hold up very well against the uh, Greek infantry. And uh, another thing that's you know, been around for a while, it's a fairly well-known historian and he has a, a book on the... Uh, I think it's called the Western Way of War, which is taking the you know what happened with um, Greece and Persia or Macedon and Persia as symbolic of uh, you know a different kind of mentality. But I think that both of them are wrong, and I think it's um, you know the reason why you know, the Persian army didn't do very well against the Macedon is uh, to do something else, which is. Um, well, no, it interests me. It might might not interest someone else. And the, the basic gist is it is an aristocratic army versus a republican army. That's that's my basic thesis. So I think armies are um, are a product of their um, of the society they come from. And there's uh, lots of different factors in that, but I'm, the three I'm going to concentrate on here is uh, geography enemies and political structure as um i think that you know they determine you know what army you end up and you end up with and uh and, and that's the big clash um between um persia and greece in my opinion so the three factors say geography enemies and um and social structure which are in fact all related but you know, if you look at the Persian Empire, you know, the first thing you notice, or not, maybe not, but is that it includes a lot of the flat bits. You know, the, the bits that were of early civilization. You know, the Tigris Euphrates, the Mes Mesopotamia region, region, and you know, various flat bits in Persia and whatever, as as well as um, the very surrounding mountainous parts and desert parts. And the uh, and the other big factor is that they're right next to the steppe. In fact, originally came from the steppe uh, down into you know in, to become the Persian Empire. So what that, what does that mean in terms in terms of, of geography? The first point is that when you've got the flat bits and source of horses from the steppe, then you you can have cavalry. You can have lots of cavalry, and uh, I mean that's that's a, a big factor in terms of um, what kind of army you're going to get. And the second part of that is when you compare it with Greece, or also it's the enemies. Your enemies are going to be all the hill tribes in the hill, mountainous bits, and you're going to be in the flat bits with your cavalry. And the big difference between the Persia and Greece on in that score is that Greece was, uh, you know, very mountainous, um, and you know, lots of narrow, narrow, narrow valleys. And uh, so you've got basically well, got a, you know a cavalry army with um infantry enemies or mostly infantry, infantry enemies plus step enemies and in greece you've got you know a lot of city states all fighting each other in these narrow um narrow valleys so looking at it you know from a closer scale you know, you've got all the nice flat bits the first half flat bits um so which means you've got plenty of um land to support your horses in your cavalry and lots of peasants to do your farming so as those are two critical factors on them um, on the on the train versus greece being a you know narrow mountains or rather mountainous train with uh, narrow valleys so that's that that's one part of, of what, what the fight was really about it's like two very distinct um terrain two two diff very distinct sets of geography that are basically fighting each other and the thing that follows from that is um, who the Persians' enemies were, generally speaking. So basically, who were their enemies? Um, in Inside the Persian Empire, you, you've got the nice, flat, fertile bits um, with uh, you know, kind of peasant archers and cavalry. And so, yeah, the key point is you know, the cavalry were their dominant force. Because they had all the horses, they had the kind of people to come from the steppe, and uh, and your sparabari, your peasant archers, are basically the, a secondary force, you know, 
fight local enemies. And so if you think about, you know, what who the Romans were, there's the basically the desert and mountain people, you know, the hill tribes, you know, from games like uh, Rome Total War, you got the hill tribes, and, uh, you know, well, so what, what do you get? you got, like, guys with, you know, you know, javelins and and shields and stuff, and small shields against you people with you know massive archers with uh, were effectively a kind of police type shield at the front. So you know, it's uh, say the, the dominant um, force was, was the cavalry of the Persians anyway. But I'd say as as an infantry backup or as a you know, infantry corps, you know, you got a lot of guys with archers with bows. And a bunch of guys at the front with their equivalent of a, of a police, just shoot them. You know, that's, it's basically a win for the sparrow, sparrow barrows. And then another version would be again the hill tribes again. So uh, their skirmishers can get beat, and then you've got their guys, generally kind of um, low level, low levels of armor. I mean, I'm using gauls here because um, because that's what I've got, but. Um, you know, it's the, gen the principle's the same. You know, you've got the guys on from the hills going against your sparrow barrow on the uh, you know, your peasant archers from the uh, from the first arc bits, and again they're shooting lots of arrows. Uh, they've got some guys because the thing about the sparrow barrow, I think, I think they're, they're mostly archers. They're not really infantry. They're the archers first, yeah, but they have got some at the front with the spears, and you know, again the, these uh, the hillmen come on. Charging along with shields, but very little armor, and you know, if the Persian cavalry couldn't deal with them, again, the, the sparrow barrow are at least, you know, equal to that level of um, of, of of infantry. You know, when you've got that kind of infantry without good armor, and all these archers shooting at them, you can, you know, you got got the, the guys at the front can hold the line for some amount of time, but these are getting shot at constantly as they approach. So you know. I'd say that the sparrow barrow could uh, equal, I mean, it can deal with an enemy like that. And the third type of local enemy they've got, or they have, is, you know, again, these, these are Greek cavalry, but they're meant to represent sort of steppe cavalry. So you've got the steppe guys coming in, you know, not very, not very heavily armoured, or any armour at all, not very shielded, you know, firing their bows, say, you know, these are meant to you know, to represent step archers. Again, you've got some you've got the guys at the front with their big shields and um great masses of archers behind. So that's actually that's you know, a pretty good way of defeating uh step horse horse archers. Leaving aside that say the you know, Persians the the main force is in the cavalry, but just as a kind of basic infantry, defensive infantry, that's actually you know, this is probably the best way to deal with horse archers. You, know, you get a, a bunch of infantry with some guys at the front with a big shield, and the rest all firing from behind. It's particularly because I mean I think in the, in the various games you can see um, you know the horse archers can shoot arrows from a long way away, whereas I don't think that's likely. So I think historically it's mostly uh, like writers they they do that kind of circular, you know, where they ride around in a circle and then and, and they fire their bows or throw their javelins at a close range. So you know, sparrow barrow was great. Would be great against those, um, like those kind of, um, like those kinds of enemies. Another thing to bear in mind is, um, you know, when, when the Chinese went onto the steppe to fight with the steppe, um, steppe tribes, they'd do it in a similar kind of way. Then they'd have these like heavy armored infantry, creating a kind of square, with um, dudes with crossbows, you know, in amongst them, and so it's like a, a moving castle basically. They they got a, a square of infantry square of infantry moving across the steppe like a mobile castle with a lot of um, archers or um, crossbow guys taking out the uh, horse archers from from a distance so again I, th I think for the train that they're on for their, their uh, vicinity you know, with, with the sort of enemies they've got you've got these hill tribes on one side and you've got um, desert or steppe cavalry um, tribes on the other you know, something like the sparrow barrow is, um, you know, perfectly adequate for dealing with those as a base. Plus, of course, you know, the Persians have got their own um, cavalry to deal with them as well. So I, I say, you know, the sparrow barrow were great 
for the enemies that they um, that they had to deal with. But their problem was they weren't very good at dealing with actual heavy infantry, you know, with um, decent shields and armor. Um, because you know that's what that wasn't what they they were designed for. They they were designed for the terrain that they uh, existed on, which didn't have um, heavy 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 infantry. And the other thing, of course, is um, even then it was still. Um, if you remember that that battle, I think it was Plataea. I can't actually remember the one where the the, the Greeks um, ran at the when the um, the Persians had landed, and then they sent off their cavalry, and it's just the infantry behind. So the Greeks attacked, but they um, you know, they didn't march into the attack. They actually ran across the um, the, the gap, you know, to, to take less casualties from the from the bows, from the archers. Which goes to show that you know even if even with um, decent armor and a big shield and such, they could they would still could get you know completely wrecked by the sort of sheer number of um, Persian arrows. So even even though they're proper heavy heavy infantry, the sparrow arrow could still um, could still cause them a lot of problems. And the last example is um, the per or the Macedonian phalanx. I think one of the things that's um, maybe not mentioned enough uh, when talking about that is how you know, the various historians at the time said how much how protected the phalanx was um, against missiles. Because the um, this great hedge of pikes ahead of the um, ahead of the soldiers, and a kind of overhead hedge, had a very negative effect on the on the danger of being of arrows, because you know, the arrows were coming and they clatter on all these pikes and stuff, spin around, get knocked and knocked and deflected, and so you know didn't actually do a lot of damage. So I think one of the you know one of the things about the phalanx or the, the Macedonian version, is um, it was much better protected against missiles than the um, standard Greek hoplite fang fangs. So, um, you know, it, it basically negated the advantage of the sparrow barrow. So basically my point is, um, the sparrow barrow were, you know, I wouldn't say you know, perfect, but they were very well designed for the enemies they had to face, but they weren't well designed for these new enemies, okay, the Greeks and Macedonians. The critical point, in my view, that the um, that they weren't crap. You know, you think they were rubbish because of you know, like um, like with the, with the Greeks. I think is that Plataea when they ran across the um, the gap, taking a few casualties from the bows, and then they kind of could defeat the um, sparrow barrow in close combat. So the basic point I'm making is that the sparrow barrow were you know very well designed for the sort of enemies that they would come into contact with in their original kind of region um but when they uh you know bumped into the the greeks you got a you know, a different set of enemies a different type of enemies which um you know under the right circumstances they couldn't deal with deal with so it's not like so it's not like they were bad it's just that they were good for their own terrain and uh but they weren't suitable when you're kind of coming up against uh when they go too far, basically, when they, when they stretch outside their region into somewhere that's got enemies which um, they're not they're not designed for. Um, yeah, and as, as the third point is say is one is uh, geography that one they they had the cavalry army and two their enemies would tend to come from um, you know, resource poor regions so they didn't have a lot of armor, so the, you know, the hill tribes and the steppe. Um, horsemen, they could be easily taken out with a uh, massed archery, um, and it's uh, yeah, so, so the geography and the, the the geography basically decides what type of enemies they'd have, enemies they'd have to face, and uh, Sparrow Arrow were very well designed for those type of enemies. And the third point, which I think is um, is pretty is critical, is uh, the political structure. I say there's three types of basic, or three basic types of political structure for the civilized um, factions in this period, and that is aristocratic, oligarchic, and republican. Um, 
And the difference is, in an oligarchy, this would generally be a kind of a, like a city-state, like uh, uh, Carthage, where they've got a lot of money, but not a lot of soldiers, and so they um, just pay for mercenaries. And that's it's slightly different in Carthage because actually the actual um, the citizens were you know, recruited into the navy, and so they they you know, had mercenaries for the army. But that's still a general, you know, general idea, and it's quite you know, similar to a place like Venice in later later times. So oligarchy is one, but the other, the, other, the two main ones of, uh, from this period, say, are, are republic and aristocracy. And the difference is, is when an aristocracy, you can have like, say, say five percent of the population do most of the fighting. So you have, and that generally goes with cavalry. So you have an aristocratic cavalry and you know some kind of peasant slubs for uh, for the infantry. And the big difference between that and in the Republic, it's um, generally, you get maybe say 20 or 30 percent of the men do the fighting. They're, they're, they're the citizens and uh, they're supposed to do the fighting. And the, and the big difference generally is horses. Generally speaking, for a, um, for an aristocracy, you, you need, you need, it needs to be cavalry, you know, because they can um, dominate a larger number of people. So you know, in an aristocratic um, setting, you have, you know, say, say you know, 5% of them actually um, make up the cavalry and, and they have their kind of um, peasant archers or sergeants and stuff. Whereas the comparison with in the Republic, which generally happens, as I say, for get a cavalry base in aristocracy, you need to have horses, obviously. So that's a big, that's to say that's a big difference. And why Greece was the way it was is because they didn't have a lot of horses. Horses. So you have a Republic, you've got 20, 30 percent and they, they form heavy infantry. And so that, that's the real you know, difference between Persia and Greece slash Macedon. Was, uh, you know, Persia was a, a cavalry aristocracy and um, Greece and Macedon were, Macedon, or, or Greece was a kind of infantry based republic or republican system. So infantry based republican system versus a cavalry based aristocracy. And so really, the thing about Persia is that they were like an early version of a cavalry-based aristocracy in that some of the technology that was, um, that was needed, because in, in, later, in Europe in the later medieval, time, medie, medieval times, you, know, you had a cavalry-based aristocracy. But the big difference was you know, the, the technology, things like stirrups, saddles, and, um, and uh, bridles. You know, they developed to the point where you could have you know, heavy melee cavalry, you know, cavalry that could actually charge and defeat heavy infantry. Whereas in the Persian era, they didn't really have that. They're more what I would call medium cavalry. You know, they might be kind of have armour and stuff like that, but because they don't have the rest of the, um, the kind of technology for it, like you know, like the saddles that will hold you back. You know, if you're going to charge with a lance, you need something that's going to kind of um, deal with all those forces. Um, you know, you've got to have like you know, thick saddles with a high back and all that kind of stuff, and proper stirrups and proper bridles. And they didn't really have that then. Um, as you can tell with like things like you know the Macedonian companions, you know, they they charge with both hands on the lance um, because you know they, they didn't have the the equipment. The same, they didn't have the equipment of medieval knights. So really, I'm saying you know, Persia was an example of a cavalry-based aristocracy. That hadn't fully developed yet, so they're really a kind of. If you define you know heavy cavalry as as cavalry that can charge heavy infantry, then the Persians are really a medium, medium cavalry. They could successfully uh, charge medium infantry, but not really medium, uh, not really med heavy infantry, especially not ones with pikes. So, so the real comparison with Persia is with medieval Europe. In medieval Europe was basically, uh, you know, it's basically the same as um, Persia, but with better cavalry technology. And uh, Persia was a cavalry aristocracy without the technology, without the technology they need, they need, needed to be able to defeat to defeat heavy infantry. And so, really, when you're looking at um, Persian Sparabara, they're effectively the same, you know, the equivalent of you know, peasant archers in medieval Europe. You know, or slightly better version of peasant archers, but basically that. Um, and so, you know, if, if you if you imagine um, 
medieval Europe with um, less good cavalry. That, that's uh, kind of where all the Sparrow are or were. So it's not really going back to that original point about you know what this is, historian guy. So I don't want to knock him up, say him off because I, I like him generally. But I think his idea that you know there was a Western way of war uh, is not quite right. Right, it was a, you know the whole Western night thing depended on technology that hadn't been developed yet in the Persians. So the Persian army was like a kind of a I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to use the word. Again. Um, the right word for it, but it's it's basically a low tech version of medieval knights, or or of a medieval army. In a medieval army, you'd have you know your knights, and uh, some peasant archers, and uh, and sergeant. Sergeant means vet, veteran originally. So the, again, the equivalent in the Persian army would be you know the sparrow would be your peasant archers, and the immortals would be your sergeants. You know, basically just more experienced. Basically the same as Sparrowara, but with more experience. There was kind of like peasants who'd been in the Sparrowara, and the ones who were you know, veterans from that, they could go into being the, the immortals. So if you think of uh, the Persian army as being a, a less good version of a medieval European army, then I think that's I think that's the right comparison. And that's why you know, the Sparrowara should be a bit, should be a bit rubbish when it comes to um, Mali against heavy infantry, you know, the great against uh, what you might call you know, the medium infantry, the sort of hill tribes infantry, and good against step archers, uh, horse archers, but not that good against uh, heavy heavy infantry. And and then in, in in the medieval period, you know, that wouldn't matter because um, you got the knights to deal with heavy heavy infantry, but um, in the Persian versus Greek region um, timing. The technology hadn't developed enough for the cavalry to be able to dominate heavy, heavy infantry. So um, I don't know. Is that it? I think I think that's basically it. But when when people talk about Persian versus Greece as if there's, it's a kind of um, you know, big cultural difference between the regions, I'd say it's more than just the um, the Persians had got to the medieval phase, but without the technology to have really heavy to have heavy cavalry that could beat heavy infantry and it's really a kind of aristocracy versus republic Aristoc arist aristocratic cavalry version of a, of a society versus a republican heavy infantry version of society and this the, the, Persian, the technology, technology wasn't there at the time for the um, Persians to win so I don't, I don't know if that's clear or anything but um, that's basically my, my thoughts on Sparrow Barra Okay, to the pit.